How's it going everyone? It's Ben Foggins Media Corner back again with a brand new video for today. Welcome back to yet another movie review, aka After I Saw review video for today. For this new aka After I Saw review video for today, this is going to be my review on a film that just came out uh, this year for 2022, which this one came out uh, just uh, two months ago in the US, but this dropped by today in the UK, and I saw this movie today, I saw this movie just a few, a couple of hours ago, and I'm here to give you guys my f personal thoughts on what I thought of this brand new release that just dropped by today in the UK, in my area, so... So let's go. So today's review is going, be, is going to be my review on the 2022 historical comedy drama, and that movie is Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Now, this movie is based off a book, which I didn't even notice that. I know I didn't even realize this is a third screen adaptation, which I never noticed that until I did a bit of research of this film before I actually did before I actually did go out and see this movie. So anyway, so this film was directed by um, Anthony Fa Fabian, and this tells the story of this uh, woman named uh, Mrs. Harris, who's played by Leslie Manville, which this movie is set in the 1950s in London, and we see that her life in London is that she's a widowed uh, cleaning lady, which she lost her husband during the war, and um, what ends up happening is that um, when she does her job, she has kind of a normal life, even though she's struggling to basically cope with the loss of her husband who died during the war, and... Uh, what ends up happening is that one day while she was cleaning, uh, she comes across this dress that she really adores and she really wants to get, even though it costs a lot of money. And so, what ends up happening is that she gets a few, she gets some money from a few of, from from a few of her friends as well as um, what her her late husband left before he pa before he passed. And so, what ends up happening is that uh, for Mrs. Harris, she goes to Paris where she wants to get a dress of her own. And not only does that, she only does that. She interacts with a few of the characters in the film. So. Yeah, it's pretty much the simple story of Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Now, uh, when I first saw the trailer for this uh, movie, when this was about to come out in my area, this one did seem pretty interesting to me uh, for what kind of film this was going to be like. Cause this felt like an old-fashioned uh, film that would have came out in the 50s and all that. And this movie is set in the 50s. And I can tell this movie was going to be... This movie is mostly set towards, like, um, like for old generation, like, for old people and all that. And I can tell, like, this was going to be their kind of cup of tea. Um, but once um, I did a bit of research of this film, I, I didn't even realize this was, was this was based off a book, and I've never read the book itself. And no, I didn't even realize this was actually a third screen adaptation we've had of that book to the big screen. And and I never saw any of those um, adaptations before for the that was made for the big screen. And so for this one, I went in with an open mind, uh, a fresh open mind, knowing nothing about the previous move, the previous adaptations we've had of this book, as well as never reading the book itself. And for the cast who are in this movie, you've got some pretty talented names, but while there isn't a a whole lot I know, but there's a few. Like you got Leslie Manville, she has done a few things here and there. Uh, Isabelle Huppert, who's a French actress, I think she's talented. And Jason Isaacs, who of course you may know him as Lucius Malfoy from the Harry Potter series. That's the that's the only one I was very familiar with at first. Uh, but anyway, um, like I said, this was released uh, last month and in July in the US, but this dropped by today on the 30th of September of this year in the UK. And so I went to see this on the opening day and there was quite a few people on my screen. And most, I can, most of them were just like old people and all that because like I said, I can tell this movie was set towards old people and all that because this is set in the 50s. And so after walking out of this film, I can definitely say that I definitely had a enjoyable time with this one. This was a delightful watch here. This was a really good book adaptation here. And uh, for the last book adaptation I saw that was released this year, which was uh, where the crew had saying, I thought that movie was just an okay, a mediocre watch myself. Uh, but for this one, I could say I enjoyed this one a lot more than why the crawdad sing here. Well, not everything in this movie is perfect or anything, because I do have a few flaws with this movie, which we'll get to later on. But the things I could definitely say that were good in this film were the performances. Um, uh, Leslie Manville, I thought she gave a really, I thought she gave a great performance as Mrs. Harris, and for the whole character development for her, I thought was really memorable for her because there was not a single dull moment for her. There was not a dreaded moment where. You just immediately just you don't want to care for this character or anything. There was not a single moment like that in this film because again I was really invested with her character because I just wanted to make sure that she was going to get the dress in this film that she really wanted because that's her story because you know she just wants to get the dress that she really adores so much and she just wants to have. And I really dug all that in this film. And for, as for everyone else in the film, like you've got Jason Isaacs, Isabel Huppert, and Lucas Brava. I thought they all gave strong performances here. And the direction by Anthony uh, Fabian looks. Uh, really beautiful for the whole look of London and Paris in this film since it, when it cuts back here and forth well the first half is in London and then towards like sort of like the second half of the film it's set in, it's mostly in Paris and then it gets back to London and all that in this film and which for the whole the whole look of of those locations in this film looks really looks really 
looks really beautiful since this movie is set in the 50s and the costume designs in this film I've seen you what I was going to expect from here in this film since I saw the trailers because the costumes like the whole design of them in this film looks really really beautiful for the colors the clothing and and everything like that it just looks really really beautiful and the story for this film well since this film is based off the book which again I've never read the book because I went in with I went in with a fresh open mind knowing nothing about the book or the previous film adaptations I thought the story for this film was really strong was pretty strong but I wouldn't say it was super memorable here for myself but still though the story was was still pretty strong here and um well, for storytelling this film, I kind of found a few. I kind of found a few scenes in this film pretty much being slow for myself because it's mostly due to the pacing issues, uh, which a pacing for this film I kind of found pretty much slow. Despite that, this is not a, a uh, this it's not a slow burn film or anything. It's not a two and a half hour film or it's not two hours or anything. This movie is only an hour and fifty five minutes. Well, it does and well for scenes when it does get pretty much slow, it does manage to pick itself up to get something really important for this film. That's just another uh, weak aspect I have with this film, along with its story being like not like super memorable here for myself. And this film surprises have a bit of heart and emotions to it, which for having all that in this film for this um, old fashioned dramedy film, I thought was really well structured here because it managed just to be really like hearted and yeah having some moments that I can definitely say that will definitely make the audiences have the floodgates open from floodgates open there but in the end guys um Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris this was like I said a delightful watch yeah it's definitely a much better book adaptation it's way better than where the crawdad sing which again I thought that was okay and if you're a fan of um the original book or if you're a fan of um the cast or the director I could definitely say this will definitely be, be a good cup of tea here so that's pretty much all to say about uh, Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris I'm gonna give Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris Four out of five. Despite the two flaws I did have with this old-fashioned dramedy film, I still managed to have a delightful time with this one. And like I said, this was definitely a better book adaptation to the big screen this year. It was way, it was way better than where the crowd I'd sing. Despite audiences liking it, I just thought it was just a mixed bag for myself. Because I did, there were some things I did like in that, but again, there, were, there was a lot of problems I did have with this one. But this one, I could definitely say was much better than that film. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching for my AKR for a saw review on Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. And let me know what you think of this new release. If you have seen this already, if you just recently checked out this film, did you have a delightful time with this? Or was this, wasn't this really your cup of tea? As always, thank you guys so much for watching. And this has been Foggins Media Corner signing off.